Welcome back, Jersey Nation. It's your boy, Jersey Boy. We're back at it again. And as you can see, we have taken in back-to-back -back weeks now for the first time losses, uh, losing very badly to the Jaguars. Um, this could be the start of something very drastic for our season. You know, once is a coincidence, two times is a trend, three times is a habit. So hopefully we turn it back around when we face the Dolphins next week. But just to get into it, uh, we're still doing very well on the season at 5-2, but still uh, that loss to the Patriots could have been a turning point for us. So Nick Foles threw three touchdowns on us and an interception, and Sam Darnold actually ended up coming out of the game uh, with how often they were getting in the backfield to take him down. So we're hoping that wasn't a serious injury uh, to him. Trevor Simeon didn't do any better, really, when he came in. Um, he didn't really get sacked as much, but still, he did end up throwing two picks, which I uh, can't really say cost us a game, but, you know, it didn't help any comeback chances for us either. In the rushing department, Leonard Fournette was held to 80 yards on 24 attempts. Le'Veon Bell puts up 55 on 14, and he adds another fumble uh, to his total for the season. Bilal Powell had the greatest success in the limited amount of snaps that he had. Uh, getting 17 yards on just four attempts there. In the receiving department, Le'Veon Bell pretty much paced uh, the entire game with 78 yards on seven catches, so he was able to do a lot of his damage there. Um, D.D. Westbrook gets 66 and a touchdown. We get seven receptions out of the tight end from the Jaguars, um, and nothing else really notable for us as we had a very, very hard time moving the ball uh, against that Jaguars front. And then taking a look at our defense, so our top three tacklers on the team this week, C.J. Mosley, Mackenzie Alexander, and Jamal Adams, which is about generally to be expected with uh, two out of the three. Polite gets in the backfield twice, and then we get some contributions from Mosley, Adams, Nickerson, May, and Williams, which is nice to see. Uh, we get a sack on Copeland and then uh, a shared sack between Shepard and Jenkins there. And then the only interception in the game came from Jamal Adams, We'll see, fumble-wise, if we were able to continue. Okay. Um, so one of the few games we've had this season where nobody's forced any fumbles and we haven't had any other real notable plays uh, for our defense here. So for the first time this season, um, I'm going to go ahead and get to the next week so we can see some scouting. Um, we'll also check out the Dolphins' depth chart as well. Um, but we'll really take a, a quick look at what's going on with our uh, list of agents we need to re-sign and really start considering uh, what we want to do with some of the, the key players we'll be looking at. So Quincy Nunwood says, Coach, it's been quiet for me out there on the field and I normally wouldn't complain, but when I'm not catching passes, I don't feel like I'm helping the team. So can you get me more involved in the offense this week? Um, sure, why not? Let's go ahead and say that we can get him involved. Yeah, I totally understand where you're coming from. I'll do my best to make sure you're involved this week. Okay, perfect. Can't wait for the game. So looks like that boosted his morale 10 points, which is outstanding. And if he can get five catches or a 100-yard game, we will have had a successful game plan for him. So with that said, let's jump right into scouting real quick. And we're going to start taking a look at the linebacking core and then moving into the back seven of the defense. So nothing really special about the way I scout. Um, kind of as mentioned before, I'm really just trying to get everybody in the first three rounds um, revealed. That way I can pretty much make a, as great of an educated decision as possible. Um, haven't, can't really see anybody that would be like a can't miss player just yet. Um, Josh Malowski here looks promising potentially um, other than that we don't have anybody that really really stands out although there might be a diamond and rough in Amari Bullocks here uh, in the third round with that B plus finesse move so we'll check out the depth chart for the Dolphins just so we can see what we're looking uh, to face this week so Ryan Fitzpatrick leading the way for them. Josh Rosen still backing up, trying to earn himself a starting role. Kenyon Drake 
we have Kaylin Ballage here or uh, Balage, and then they have uh, a young Mark Walton Jr. So Kenny and Drake uh, in this franchise still happens to be with them, and I'm sure he's putting on a phenomenal performance in the receiving game. Kenny Stills, Albert Wilson, and then they have Bryce Butler. So looks like Devontae Parker is not playing for them, uh, which could bode well for us and our chances of turning our season back in our favor. We have to worry about Cameron Bray and Dwayne Allen there uh, with the young Mike Jasicki that they've been developing, um, and he's been playing a key role in their offense. Let me tunzel the strong book in for them. Michael Dieter is a weak point on the line. Same with Daniel Kilgore and Jesse Davis. So they are having essentially the same issues we are, uh, where they don't have much of an offensive line, but they have a tackle in place for them at one of the most important positions. So um, I'm sure that they will end up putting some work on their line in the offseason as well. William Hayes, Derek Shelby here. Uh, we're dealing with Charles Harris. Looks like they have a lack of uh, players on the line, potentially the young Christian Wilkins coming in uh, with Devon Gacho and then uh, Vincent Taylor there rounding out the top three. Okay, Kiko Alonso not really bouncing back from the player he looked like he was going to be in his first two seasons. And then their defensive core uh, in the secondary is something that can potentially be a problem. Xavier Howard leading the way for them, developed really nicely. Uh, Eric Rowe teaming up, and then they have Tory McTire there for them. Uh, in addition to that, Fitzpatrick is still patrolling the back end for them with TJ McDonald, and then we have to worry about Rashad Jones. So uh, we'll see if Quincy and Nunwa actually ends up being able to accomplish his goals this week. Now, looking into the players we will be looking to keep. So, of course, uh, regardless of stats, I do plan on retaining Cody White here, at least while we try to get some more solid additions onto the line. So, he would like a two-year contract. Um, 4.8 million, 2.11 sign-in bonus. So, I, I'd expect with him being closer to uh, the age you don't want Lyman to get to um, in the 30s of course that's pretty much the, the de facto mark by a lot of people um, surprised he's not going really for like a three or four year contract because this is basically like a pseudo one year contract for us but that is a-okay maybe we can slide him around the line depending on what we do so he's going to want some revisions there Leonard Williams let's take a look at what he's done on the season so far wouldn't mind getting some more draft capital at some point so he's gotten six solos only 15 overall for the season he's racked up four tackles for losses and he has a sack um, so even if we were to project those over the course of the next uh, eight games in the season or so um, that only gives him about 30 tackles total for the season eight tackles for loss and another sack so he is behind the eight ball in terms of what he's been doing and we don't have any other noticeable traits here so um it's a little late to see if we can get him on the trading block or anything but it might be worth uh doing a one-year rental and doing like a sign and trade for him potentially Blau Pau, he's just on the wrong side of 30 and he's actually been one of my favorite players on the jets for a long long time um, Steve McClendon as well wrong side we do have the young Quentin Williams to hold down the force I'm not concerned now Brian Poole uh, would be somebody I don't mind retaining as our starting slot cornerback he's done 34 tackles for the season two for loss a sack he's picked off two balls um, and overall looks like he's had a pretty solid season so far for us getting two defensive touchdowns as well uh, so a couple pick sixes on his resume for the season. I say let's go ahead and take our chance with re-signing him. Uh, and we'll keep him on closer to his age 30 year. Uh, where we'll make another decision for him. And perfect, we have him signed. Now Jordan Jenkins has been a developing player season after season. Let's see if that trend will probably continue for him. 
23 for the season four. He's already got five sacks in half a season. I think this bodes well for his chances uh, being able to improve on his stats again. I won't mind bringing him in, even if we find a really great linebacker uh, throughout the draft or maybe in free agency, then we have a very good depth piece here uh, with Jordan Jenkins. All right, so it looks like we'll have to do some number crunching with him as well. Corey Grant, we're not going to bring in. I'm going to rely on free agency for that. Um, Ty Montgomery as well, so I don't mind being thin at the position by the time we finish. Eli Rogers. He's had some really great games, and he's had some not-so-hot games, so... So we will go ahead and uh, consider signing Eli Rogers here. And the ideal that I have in mind is that he's going to be our floor piece. So it looks like we do get him. And then Obi Melanfonwu, um, we've only had him for this uh, first season with our franchise, signed as a backup to Jamal Adams. And uh, hopefully he can remain that for us. Um, he has started his season off injury prone. Um, and just kind of looking at his stats, uh, you can see that's reflected. His coverage traits aren't the best. Tackle could be better, but he does have great speeds. Uh, and I love his size for the position. And Jamal Adams is going to dominate the snaps, especially if we can keep him long term with us. So I don't mind having him. Um, and actually, I want to go back and take a look at his stats for this season real quick just to see if we have uh, any eye popping numbers there. So as we take a look, 28 tackles on the season. He has a sack. Um, other than that, I don't notice any other impact plays as we can see here. Um, so hopefully we can coach him up a little bit and make him a much more productive player for us uh, for the coming seasons. Uh, we'll only be looking to extend him for about a year or two at the moment. Uh, so it won't be detrimental. And again, I, I really consider this being uh, probably like a floor depth piece signing for us. Uh, similar in nature to what we're doing with Eli Rogers. So ideally, um, just taking a look at his snaps on the season as well. Um, he's probably only playing about 20 to 30 snaps uh, per game. Let's see. So yeah, that sounds about right. Let's let me just do some quick math here. So for the 2019 season, he is averaging about 27 snaps or so yeah so even if he was a, a terrible backup um he's playing about half the game so he's a serviceable starter right now he's not somebody you would want to rely on on the back end uh we'll see how the season goes on progresses for us so we do get him extended um so we have him on board we'll see how the draft and free agency really plays out with helping us support things um although I, i'm much more similar to uh the packers in nature where uh i really want the draft to be the, the focus of the whole season for us but with that said guys it's been a pleasure it's your boy jersey boy and i'm out peace